Hello and welcome to this video on GT Summary Package. GT Summary allows us to create nice and simple tables or summary tables using our data. So let's start using it by calling these three packages GT Summary, dplyr, and Wakefield. So I'm going to create some sample data first and for that reason I'm going to use the Wakefield package. So let's see how I'm going to create some sample data. So I have some data for names, education, age, sex, and hair color. And everything is coming from the Wakefield package. So this is our sample data. And because I told Wakefield command to give us data for 100 people, so you can see that I said generate 100 names. And if I wanted to create it differently, I can say give us 10 names. I'll give you 10 names. And if I run it again, I'll get another 10 names, so it's completely at random. So let's go back to our main topic. So here is the first table summary. So I'm using our data set DF and only selecting the education and sex from that and then passing it to the command table summary, which is coming from the GT summary package. So I can also do it like this. So if I run it, so I'm removing this line Let's see what it does. It has given us a table of the summary of the education and then also for the sex. You can see that we have the numbers and the percentages. Now let me insert this by command. So by equals sex. Let's see what it does to our table now you would see that suddenly the data has been categorized by the male and female. You can see the number of males and number of females there. You would see that we also have the percentages and if you look very carefully the percentages are by column so everything is for females. So if you sum it up, you will see that you'll get 100%. So for example, there's 48 males and out of 48 males, so many of them have been, out of all the males, so many of them have been having a high school diploma. And similarly, so many females, out of so many females, out of 54 females, you know, these numbers have got the bachelor's degree and so on. If I wanted to change this default behavior of giving us the percentages by the column, I can simply go and change it and I can say I want the percentage by row. So using this command, you would see that suddenly there will be a bit of a transformation. You would see that now suddenly the numbers have changed. So if you take that, you would see that one male, one female has got no schooling. That means 50% of the males and 50% of the females. So this is actually by the overall numbers now. So the total is by row. You can see that each row would sum up to 100%. I find it very useful when I just need to f create a summary just for one variable. So for example, just the education. So I can only select the education and say, give me a table summary. In this case, is going to be a very simple uh, categorization of all the, it's basically a frequency table for education saying so many of them have bachelor's degree, so many of them had master's, etc. Similarly for sex, I can do the same thing and it'll give you the split. Now let me bring back two variables into our command. So using the sex and the age, if I run it now, you would see that we have the data for the sex males and females in terms of the number because that's a categorical variable just giving us the frequency and the percentage and for the age because it's a numeric value it has given us the median and the IQR the lower quartile and the upper quartile. If I add by equal sex command you would see that instead of the vertical orientation this will now become horizontal which is also sometimes useful. So in terms of the statistics for the age, it's giving us the median and the interquartile range, the lower quartile and the upper quartile. 
So how do we change it? I can tell the GT summary that I want to create the statistics for all continuous variables as the mean and the standard deviation, as you can see. So instead of the median IQR, it's going to show us the mean and the standard deviation. So this is the command with curly brackets. And you can put the round brackets around the standard deviation. Let's check out the difference now. Let's run this command. And you would see that instead of the median, it has now become the mean and the standard deviation. So if I wanted to put some random wording in front of the output, I can do that. You can see that suddenly it has started showing that random wording out there. So to make it more useful, I should have actually said just ears or something like that. Here we go. You can also add a missing text definition in this as well, so that if there is some data missing, let's say for age, is going to show us as missing. But in this case, because we have created this data from Wakefield, everything was filled in, so it's not going to show us any different output. And similarly, we can also control what is going to show for the categorical variables. So we can say that I want to see the frequency of the individual variable or the level, and then also show us the overall grand total, capital N, and then also the percentages. So let's see what it does. It hasn't done anything for us because we didn't have any categorical variable to display. So if I go back and instead in the select command, I add education and run this command again, you would see that it has given us the numbers by education. So in the row you can see education. And now you can see that it has given us the individual frequency for the males, and then the overall number of males, the capital N, and also the percentage. Using these three commands. We can add some extra commands in there as well. For example, add underscore N. You would notice that suddenly we have another column which gives us the N, the number, the total number. So in this case, we had 100 observations. We can add more commands in there as well. Something called add underscore overall. This is going to create an overall column for us. So you would see that there will be another column called overall, which gives us the, the total numbers. So instead of the male and the female split, it's giving us the overall numbers, which is quite useful. You can also make certain portions of the table as bold. So saying bold underscore labels. So the labels would become bold. You would see that suddenly the education has also become bold. And rest of the labels were already bold. So, so far it's looking good. Let's move further. And I'm going to add another command called bold underscore levels. So this is now going to make all the levels, for example, education has different levels, everything will become bold now. So at the top, you can see that characteristic. If you wanted to change that, we could also use it by modifying the header. Saying modify underscore header, and the label should become this, which is variable. So I'm saying level should become variable. And those two stars are just to make that thing bold. So if I run it, the characteristic should change to variable. There you go. And if I remove those two stars, you would see that it will not be a, a bold anymore. It will become just the normal text. And I'm going to change this to more meaningful Label saying education levels. There you 
There we go. One great thing about this package is that I can take this output and create a flex table. So I can say as underscore flex table and suddenly this will become a flex table which can be used in your Word document or other forms of document as well. So here you go. This has become a flex table now and you can do further customization of that if you wanted. And of course you can also take it to your Word document. So I can take it to Word document and I'm going to show it just by this command save as doc document Word document and I'm giving a path and it should create us a nice Word document for us which will only have this particular table in that. Similarly you can also put this into your RMDs or your markdowns and you can create beautiful tables out of that. And after running this command I've got this Word document which has got our flex table and you can further customize it if you want. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.